What is up guys, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark and today we're covering some more r slash am I the butthole. If you want to skip the initial waffle, timestamps are in the description below and along the timeline, so feel free to skip there. But if you are new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe and maybe that notification bell too, as it really helps out our channel. And as always, yesterday, huge support from you all once again. And you know, I'm so, so thankful for that. Thank you very, very much from the bottom of my heart. And we also had two new members on YouTube again. Oh my word, you guys, I swear. <laughs> we had Dan, thank you very much for your membership, and Nguyen Cyan 9 I do hope I got your name right. And thank you once again. And just thank you to everyone for joining us every single day, commenting, liking, all that stuff. It really helps us out. It helps our channel progress further on this crazy YouTube algorithm. I don't know how we're doing it at the moment, but we are. So thank you again. And with that being said, let's get in to today's stories. Much love, guys. Our first story comes from a throwaway account. Am I the arsehole for moving out and taking everything? Throw away for obvious reasons. Background, I, 30 female, live with a longtime friend, 30 male. We lived together for six years and known each other for 20 years, close families. It was very accepting that came with a cat. I paid for everything and legally owned her. He adored her though and would spend hours cuddling her. I owned everything, all the furniture and the white goods because I lived out of home before, but he had not. He got a girlfriend at the three and a half year mark and she practically moved in immediately. I still paid for half the rent though. She was always very rude to me and clearly didn't want me alone with my friend. There was only one lounge attached to the kitchen, so he and I would previously watch TV together or just be in the same room while another cooked, worked, etc. When she moved in, that had to stop because I was interfering with their couple time. Her attitude towards me got worse over time and my friends started treating me badly. They would leave sex toys all over the place, watch movies late and loud when my bedroom was right there, glare at me if I cooked during their couple time, and even though they hogged the TV between 4 and 9 p.m. I got a boyfriend and started spending a lot of time with him. After this, things got worse. My friend began locking my cat in small cages and putting her in the shower. He also began talking differently to me and leave the kitchen in an absolute mess, mold, to make it difficult for me to cook. I found used condoms in the lounge and then got to the stage where we wouldn't talk but all the tormenting was still going on. I decided to leave and start looking for somewhere else. The lease was up in four months but we had not discussed what we wanted to do. I found out though his sister and a close friend of mine that they had been saving up this whole time to move out and would be moving in a few weeks. This was news to me, I couldn't afford the rent by myself. I found a place before they did, spoke to the estate agent and advised them of the situation. Turns out he had not been paying his full share of the rent and she was not listed as living there. The agent did not hold me accountable for any of it. I paid four weeks leave before I left, I didn't tell them when I was leaving and on the day when they were not home my friends helped me pack up and leave. The house was clean spotless, I also took all of my furniture, white goods and kitchenware, so basically everything but his room. I took my cat. After I left I received hundreds of missed calls and messages from them abusing me for not notifying them and taking everything and my cat. Most of his family also messaged me telling me what an arsehole I am. My parents knew what I was doing, supported me but have also called me an arsehole because of our families are still not exactly on speaking terms. Wow, I don't think I would be able to call you an arsehole in this situation just because of the way they treated you through this whole story. I mean. The whole thing, what really got to me is leaving sex toys and used condoms around the lounge. I mean, what the fuck's that about? And the fact you found out they was planning to leave anyway and do exactly the same to you. So you can't be the asshole in the situation and it probably left you in a worse situation than they was going to be in. At least they was a couple and they could have worked together to pull their resources and still live there. You'd have been solo trying to pay rent by yourself, which just wouldn't have been possible. So no, screw them, you're not the asshole. And let's go to the comments below to see what we can find. I need a cool username says, not the arsehole, lol. I do love the nuclear option of moving out from shitty roommates. Your assets are yours, not his. Take all that's yours and leave him to his sex toy infested display area to enjoy. <laughs> You've done more than most would do in this situation and made it right by the landlord. Move on and enjoy your stress-free life with kitty cat. A digital hedgehog says, not the arsehole. Let me get this straight. Your friend was harassing you, abusing your cat and plant it up and leave you with a massive bill for his rent and unpaid rent. And people are telling you that you're the arsehole for getting out of there and leaving him with all the problems of his own making. He and his girlfriend have made their bed. Now it's time for them to lie in it. 
It also sounds like your parents are supporting you because they know you're right, but calling you an arsehole because his family are taking their issues on them. They need to deal with the family instead of telling you you're an arsehole because they have to deal with other families' bullshit. Also, you could probably post in one of their revenge subreddits, probably pro-revenge. Too true. <laughs> Foible Schmoible says, not the arsehole, they were nightmares and it sounds like it got to the point of mistreating your cat, so why the hell should he complain that you took your cat with you? Possibly a queen says, not the arsehole, they were purposely antagonising you. What you did was drastic but it's no different than what they were going to do. They were planning on moving out without telling you, or at least were planning on moving out and hadn't told you. You just moved out without telling them. It's worse for them because you provided them all the stuff they liked, but it doesn't make the action any different. You had good reason to believe they would have done something bad if you had told them because they were already purposely trying to make your life worse. They are already planning on moving out. They can live a couple of weeks with no furniture. Now, I turn this one to you guys. What would you have done in this situation? Who's the asshole? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story one. And our next story is from Beneficial Tough 879 Am I the arsehole? I lied about having a college fund for my stepsister to save my sister. I am 32 female. I grew up with a narcissistic mum. I never met my dad. The first hug I have received in my life was when I was at 10 years old, when Dan, my mum's boyfriend, hugged me when I thanked him for a gift. My mum had my sister a year later. My sister was the perfect baby sister anyone could ask for. Mum and Dan split, and at first mum had major custody of my sister. Mum did the same thing to my sister she did to me. Doesn't even acknowledge us in the room if she is not in the mood. Not feeding this dinner if we made a mistake made everything our fault. When Dan found out, he applied for full custody for my sister, but my mother fought and somehow wrangled 50% of custody. Things got real bad for me and the only silver lining was my sister. Despite being only four years old, she was sneaking snacks from her dad for me to eat. Anything Dan bought for her, he also bought me. He wasn't wealthy by any means, but it was small things and any time he dropped my sister, he would take his time to talk to me. He was the only father I have ever known. Dan died of cancer when I was 16 and my sister 5. He lived only 3 months from the diagnosis but settled everything financially as able as he can for my sister. He split his assets 75% for my sister and 25% for me to be given to me when I reached 18. Knowing my mum very well, he made me the executor of my sister's fund too. To say my mum was furious was an understatement. She literally made the next two years of my life for my sister a living hell. My mum started dating Brad. He already had a daughter three years younger than my sister. My mum had made it absolutely clear that my sister would be allowed to go to college only if she shares her trust fund with our stepsister. Brad is a piece of work and me and my sister have never really bonded with our stepsister. She refused to sign anything related to my sister's education unless I gave her my word that I would give my stepsister equal half of the trust fund. This is where I think I was the arsehole. I held the trust fund above my mum's head to treat my sister fairly. I repeatedly told them I would give my stepsister half of the fund until my sister was 18 and moved to college. When she moved out, we both cut any contact we had with our mum and blocked her. I made my sister give her the wrong college info so our mum couldn't contact her. I found out through friends my mum didn't know that I have my stepsister couldn't get into any college because she didn't want to apply any loans and she is very depressed. I know I misled them, but I honestly wanted my sister to be safe. Am I the arsehole for causing my stepsister's depression and robbing her of college? Edit, thank you everyone for your reassurance. I showed this post to my sister and the only thing she could say was, duh. We both have discussed and decided not to contact our stepsister. We were never close to her and my friends back there can't safely get any message to her without dragging our mum into it, which is the last thing we both want. All these awards, thank you again and to the kind stranger who gave me gold. I'm going to start off by saying I think Dan sounds like a great person, a great role model to have and I think you're doing him proud by doing what you're doing. I do feel partly bad for the stepsister's depression but that is not your fault in any way shape or form. That is the mother promising your money to her so it's her fault in the end. She's the major arsehole in this story. All you're doing is protecting your baby sister and you know you need to do that because otherwise your mum is going to walk all over her and probably end up with her money so... Not the arsehole in my opinion, but let's go to the comments below to see what we can find. Regan X says, not the arsehole. You did what you needed to do to protect your baby sister and for that, you should be proud. Your mother was trying to deny her the right of an education in order to rob her. You were justified in saying whatever you needed to say to protect your sister's interests. Dan knew what he was doing when he named you the executor. 
He knew that you would safeguard your sister's interest and you have proven that he was right to trust you. As for your stepsister, if she chooses not to apply for any loans, not going to college is her choice, not yours. She and your mother would have known for three years that they couldn't rely on robbing your sister to pay her way through college. If they didn't make alternative plans, that's on them, not you. OP replies to this saying, Dan was a great man. My sister is exactly like him. I've lost my compassion so much growing up, but my sister is still the loveliest person who cares so much. Bacon face happy pants. <laughs> Names, man. Not the arsehole. That money was for your sister from her father. There was no reason whatsoever for you to share it with your mum's new guy's kid. Stepsister not going to college because she didn't want to apply for loans is on her. I understand the blow of learning that she isn't getting the money that you told your mum she would receive, but you did that to try and keep the peace in what sounds like a shitty home. 5115E says, doing the math here, you are 32 and 11 years older than your sister, so she is 21. Your stepsister is three years younger than your sister. That makes her 18. You didn't rob your stepsister of college. Where is Brad, your stepsister's actual father in all this? Why wouldn't he be responsible for helping her in her education? She can start with community college and have her father sign for financial aid. Neither you nor your sister had anything to do with your mother and her family since your sister left for college, right? Your stepsister was a casualty to your mother's narcissism and her father enabled it. Not the arsehole. Now I turn it to you guys once again. What do you guys think of this story? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story two. And our next story is from Pill 612 Am I the arse of a shouting at a young mum and calling her a stupid bitch? Yesterday, I, 26 male, and my partner, 22 female, were driving to my parents' house for lunch. As I was driving down the main road of the village we live in, a little girl, maybe four-ish, suddenly shot off across the road in front of the car. I absolutely slammed down on the brakes. The car lurched and squealed. My partner, who was speaking, choked as the seatbelt tightened around her, and it was all very sudden and frightening. I pounded my fist on the horn at the girl and rolled down the window at the visibly terrified mother who ran out to pull her back. I was really furious and started properly shouting at her. Don't remember exactly what was said but something like, watch your child you fucking stupid bitch. We rolled the window back up and carried on but my partner was annoyed at me. She said I really shouldn't have shouted and sworn at the mother and that she was very young, she looked like very early 20s and must have been really stressed right now. I said that would have been a hell of a lot more stressed if the daughter had been killed because she couldn't have looked after her properly. It blew up into quite an argument with her defending the mum, saying that the horn would have scared her enough that it wasn't really necessary for me to scream at her like that. I admit that I was slightly out of control with anger, but considering I nearly killed a child because of her mother's negligence and that shouting at her was not only justified because of the situation, but useful to startle her into keeping better hold of her daughter in the future. Am I the asshole? Look, I kind of understand anger and all that kind of thing. And when you get hot headed, you say stupid things, but I don't think it's ever acceptable to call someone a stupid bitch. I just don't think that's acceptable, you know, especially in that situation, like the post said, she was probably really stressed anyway. No one can control their kid 24 seven. I know she may have been able to keep a better eye on her. We don't know about that, but kids are unpredictable. They do stupid things. Kids can be really stupid, right? So both the mother and the kid was probably already like super stressed out. And then for you to call her names at the same time probably didn't really help matters. Some people probably will disagree with me here, but I just don't think it's an acceptable way to deal with your anger by shouting at someone else who's probably having a stressful time just as much as you. You know, it's an accident. Accidents happen. It wasn't someone trying to intentionally damage you or anything like that. It was an accident. This kid ran out in front of the car. Sit back, take a couple of deep breaths, eat a waffle and chill the fuck out because shouting at her is going to achieve nothing but clearly get yourself in trouble with your other half. So yeah, you are the asshole in my opinion. But let's go to the comments below to see what we can find. Suitably Cheesy Chip, oh Cheesy Chip says, You're the arsehole, do you really think that's an acceptable response? I understand your frustration, but to shout and swear at a mother and child is vile. The Kawaii Diku, I don't know if I got that name right, says, Honestly, I've looked after small children near roads before, and sometimes, even if you're holding their hand, they can pull out suddenly sometimes, and it's the scariest thing. The woman really didn't need OP shouting at them on top of this. The fact that he called her a stupid bitch is completely horrible and I don't think can be justified in any situation. n 7 says, you're the arsehole. No one can control children 24 seven and things like that happen. It's not the mum's fault that the kid did it and yelling and cursing at her doesn't help the issue and only makes the situation worse. 
Elmo was a blatch says, you're the arsehole because you're the type of person who thinks it's ever, ever okay to call a woman a stupid bitch, much less in front of a child. It's even worse that you think being out of control with anger justifies your behavior. That's a major red flag. Do better. Warp Speed Mr. Sulu says, you're the arsehole. You have no idea what the circumstances were. It's a major overreaction on your part. Sure, you could have killed the child, but you didn't, and the mother was clearly terrified, so I'm sure she knows the implications of what happened. Now, I turn this one to you guys. What do you guys think of this story? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story three. And our next story is from SKM8315. Am I the arsehole for telling my husband that my inheritance is mine to do what I want with? My parents are up in age, my mother is dying, and my dad is okay, but I don't have too many years left. My parents have money and my siblings and I will get a healthy inheritance. My husband comes from a family that will leave this world without a penny to their names and won't have any inheritance. I was chatting with my dad one day and told him the first thing I'm buying with my inheritance is my dream Airstream over 100k. After I had that conversation, my husband later said to me that the inheritance is a family thing and belongs to all of us, him and kids, and we need to use it for any bills. We don't have much except house, but have tons of equity in it and a car. But again, we put down a huge payment when we buy a car, so loan isn't much. His example was to pay our house off. He said, I can't just go and buy an Airstream because I want it. And he doesn't like camping and has no desire really for one, even though he knows it's been my dream. He says I have to use the money towards something we both want. I told him, no, it's my inheritance and I will use it on what I want. And he can use whatever inheritance he gets on what he wants. He got mad and said that was a fucked up thing to say, since I know he will get no inheritance. Does my husband have a right to think he has any say in how I spend my inheritance from my parents? Edit for clarification. The amount is around half a million. I would use around 100k for the Airstream and the rest would go to whatever to benefit the family. He knows I've always wanted an Airstream. He always points them out to me and sends me photos when he sees one and I'm not with him. He suddenly got mad when my dad asked me what big thing I would do with the inheritance and I told him buy us an Airstream. It's only a fifth of the money, but my husband feels I should not be able to spend it on anything unless it has his approval. We both make well over six figures, have low bills and good savings. I have good credit and income. I could get a loan now for the Airstream on my own, but I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't want to finance any of it if I didn't have to, which is why I told my dad that it would be the one luxury I would get when he asked me. Ah, oh, this is a bit of a sad one considering that Opie's parents are probably on the way out. It's, you know, heartbreaking. <laughs> But I got to say, I think I would say that this person is the arsehole in the situation because they are married, you know, joint finances and all that. And they should be working together as a team. I, I guess that's part of what you do when you're married. You work together. And at first I didn't know what an Airstream was, but it just looks like a big, long silver caravan. Correct me if I'm wrong, but 100k has got to be a decent one, right? <laughs> I guess. But the fact that you're willing to blow just one fifth of that on a caravan without discussing it with the other half, I think it does make you the arsehole because, you know, 500k I don't think is a life changing, it is to some people, but I don't think it's a massive life changing amount of money. It won't last forever. You know, the best thing you could do with that is invest that in a house, pay off your house, or maybe invest in new property or something like that. Put it into investments and build from it rather than just blow it all. What's the point in that? I may be totally wrong in this situation, but I do think that you are the asshole for not even discussing it with your other half. And just because he's getting nothing from his side of the family that he doesn't deserve to share in in, in what you're getting through your marriage. I think if you're working for a, working through a team, that's what you should be doing. That's my opinion anyway. That's what I would be doing. So Lightwood Orchestra says, you're the asshole. You two are married with kids and shared finances. I can't imagine either me or my husband ever assuming that we had total control over a large sum of money that came our way. You sound very disinterested in your family, like you really don't care at all what their dreams for the future might be and how this money can help you get there together. But then again, you're also the type to sit around and tell your dad how excited you are for him to die so you can get an Airstream. So at least you're consistent. Yeah, you know, some of the wording in this post did come across very sort of negative, the way she talks about like her, her mother and father dying, like almost you can't wait. But at the same time, I do think it's important to talk about inheritance and how you're gonna spend it. You know, if I was dying and I was passing on inheritance, I would love to know how that person was going to spend it to better their life, you know. I think that's a good thing to talk about. Death is still a very taboo subject in the world, and I think we need to open up, still open up these boundaries further, even how difficult it is. I think we should go, we should still do that. 
Sarah Parade says, sounds like A, you can't wait for your parents to die. B, you can't stand your husband. And C, you don't actually care what anyone has to say on the matter because all your comments are defending your position on your Airstream. Just get a divorce and buy the damn thing when your dad passes. Jeez. Chewy Apple says, everyone sucks here. He shouldn't have so rudely demanded a share, but if you have bills to pay that you won't because you want to go camping, you can't fault someone for asking you to be practical, especially if you're responsible for kids. Not me, but my roommate says, you're the arsehole for having this conversation at all. Both your parents are still alive. It is their money. It is incredibly crass to start planning how you're gonna spend inheritance while everyone is still alive. Impossible Girl 2 says, everyone sucks here. It is your inheritance. You're technically allowed to do with it what you want. And your husband certainly shouldn't try and take that money by force. However, it is a bit odd to me that you have no interest in setting aside even a small portion of it for practical uses like bills. Essentially, it isn't fair for him to try and force you to spend your money a certain way when you have wants and needs of your own. However, it isn't fair for you to leave all the mandatory payments up to him later, especially knowing he won't inherit anything in the future when you have the ability to help out a little now. And now I turn it to you guys. What do you guys think of this story? Let me know in the comments below. How would you spend that money? Would you share it? Would you spend it on something else? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description. Once again, guys, thank you for being here today. You are truly, truly appreciated. As I always say, you mean the absolute world to me. You keep me going, you keep my chin up and you keep me walking tall. Thank you very, very much for your support. And I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love.